A question we often get in tech calls is how to cover a plywood panel with fabric. It's really common in Blanca wings. It's common in a lot of home builds. Uh, this is the door of the PA14 uh, Wagner 2 Plus 2 that I'm scratch building. This is a plywood door. It's been covered in fabric. It currently has two coats of Ecofill done. And these were done with a foam brush. Uh, you can see from the inside of the fuselage that the doors are covered in, in completely in plywood and then the surface is covered with the fabric. So what we're gonna do on today's video is show you how to go ahead and apply the fabric to a plywood panel and then glue it on properly so that you've got it nice and adhered and you're ready to go with paint. In this video, what I'm going to do is show you how to cover a plywood panel similar to the door on my airplane. And this would be an example of a simple door. This would be a hatchway, maybe a baggage compartment door, uh, some type uh, access area at an aircraft. You can see what I've done is I reinforced it with some half inch, uh, in this case, pine. It's just a test panel and then covered in some typical eighth inch plywood. Nice and rigid, ready to go for, our, for our, the purpose of this demonstration. What I've done is I've gone ahead and I've marked a piece of fabric and I simply laid my panel on here and I marked enough fabric so that I will be able to bring this up in around the lip of the panel. And you can see what I've done is I've put some glue on here. And what I did was I take about 60% glue and about 40% water, mix it up. And then when I have a line that I really want a nice sharp cut on, I go ahead and I paint that 60-40 mixture on the line. And then when I cut it, I don't get any fraying. Since this particular panel might be visible from the inside, especially like I said, if it's a baggage door or some other access panel, it'd be nice to have this edge right inside here nice and clean. It's perfectly okay to go ahead and cut it with pinking shears. It's completely up to you. There's no, there's no importance to the type of cut you do. It's simply an aesthetic. So I like to go ahead and make my cut. I use these nano point scissors. Uh, these things are great. Uh, they're inexpensive and they just do a really nice job of cutting. So I'll go ahead and get this cut and get it ready for us to go ahead and cover. I've gone ahead and cut the fabric and you can see having the 60-40 mixture on there, the edges are nice and crisp, there's no fraying, and it's really gonna work well for covering the panel. Let's take a look at the panel. I started to apply some glue while the glue was drying on the, on the fabric. And what I've done is I've gone ahead and I've applied glue. I'm gonna do the inside surface first so I can flip it over, just a little bit easier. Uh, I don't want to get glue all over the table. And the glue I'm using, I'm using our, our standard EcoBond glue. It's not thinned out. It's full strength. I've got a wet paper towel here to keep this from drying out during the day. It's kind of warm in here today. It's about 80 degrees. And I'm just using this simple disposable chip brush. And what I'm doing is I'm applying the glue first on this inside lip. And then I'll do the outside about the same amount. And then while that's drying, I'll talk about preparation of the surface of the wood and what you have to take into consideration when you're applying a finish on here. So this is done fairly liberal. I don't want a light coat. I need a fairly heavy coat so that I'll have enough glue for the iron to heat and bed the fabric in when we come back here and add the fabric in just a few minutes. So I've got that covered pretty well. And then I can go ahead and I can just grab this frame by the inside. And when I do this outside surface, do not coat the entire surface. That's a question we get often. When you prep this side, all you have to do is about a half to three quarters of an inch around the perimeter of the frame. This is exactly the same as if you are doing a metal frame panel. You do not, you're just coating the frame itself. In this case, you are not covering the surface. We will bond the fabric to the surface later after we've applied our fabric and we've shrunk it in place. That's probably the biggest question we get from users when they're trying to figure out how to cover a plywood panel. So again, do not coat the entire surface, just doing the perimeter like I'm doing here. And you can see it's relatively easy to do and doesn't take a lot of time to get the surface ready with the glue tack up. Okay, so you can see I've got a nice layer of glue on this side. I've got a nice layer of glue on that side. And I'm gonna go ahead and set this down 
Now let's talk about surface preparation and what you need to do to your wood prior to putting in any glue, prior to doing any covering. You need to seal the wood with some coating. You can use our waterborne coating for it. You can use epoxy. You can use spar varnish. You can use any surface prep that you want to do. The key is you've got to go ahead and seal the wood, get it completely impervious to moisture before you put on any fabric. If you use an epoxy or something else that's got a high gloss to it, go ahead and take some 320 grit sandpaper or take some red scotch Brite and go over the entire surface so that it's, it's got some tooth to it. It's a little bit rough so that the glue will stick better to the surface. That's done whenever you're applying glue to anything. If it's a tube frame, like on this fuselage, if it's been powder coated or if it's got a gloss to it, just hit it with some a red scotch Brite so that it's not quite so glossy before you put your glue on. So I'm gonna let this dry for a few minutes. It'll take about 10 minutes to tack up and then we'll come back. And at that point we can go ahead and put our fabric on. You'll see how quick and easy it is to go ahead and apply the fabric. I've waited about 15 minutes and the panel looks good and dry. And you can see when you're doing this, you'll see quite a, a shift of the color and it'll lose its glossiness. And you can tell when you've got the glue set up and tacky enough. You should be able to touch it and you'll feel it's sticky, but there shouldn't be any transfer. If there's transfer on your finger, then you've got areas that still have to let the glue tack up a little bit more. And on the back side here, there's a couple spots here that might not be quite tacked up. They're a little, giving me a little bit of transfer, but the majority of it, by the time we get to putting the fabric around this side, it should be fine. One thing that I did when I laid out my fabric was I made a little reference mark. I just made a little dot on the fabric so that when I traced my, or excuse me, a dot on my wood, and I also made a corresponding dot on my fabric. That way I, I get my alignment with my um, the, the pattern that I drew on here nice and, and correct on here. So what I'm going to do at this point is all I'm going to do is I'm going to lay this on here and I'm going to very carefully align the corners exactly the way I traced it. And you'll notice, flip this back up, there's a lot of wrinkles in this. Don't worry about it. I chose a piece that was a scrap piece. I would recommend working without big wrinkles, but I chose to use this so you can see how those wrinkles will disappear when we do our shrinking. So again, I'm just going to lay this on here and line up my corners and get those pretty well situated and just kind of lay out my or move my fabric so it's nice and, and even in here. It looks like it's pretty much centered. And then I'm going to go ahead and initially I'm just going to tack it by rubbing it with my finger. And just rubbing with my finger along that glue is going to tack that onto the surface pretty readily. Now, this may not happen in your shop. It's going to depend on temperature and humidity again. But most times I do this, I get some nice adherence with the fabric just with finger pressure. So, again, all I'm doing is applying pressure with my thumb, my fingers, rubbing this on. And any place I have a wrinkle, I just lift it up and pull it away. I'm not using any heat yet. We'll talk about the iron selection and heat in just a second. Get as much of the wrinkles out and get it as nice and flat on the surface before I start working with any of the heat. And you can see it's on there. So that worked out really nice. I haven't added any heat yet. You can see on the back side how it lines up and looks like I'm pretty close to my pencil marks. If I'm way off, I'll just lift it off and move it around. Now let's talk about the iron. Uh, I like to use the digital irons that we have in our catalog. I've used the monocoat irons that just have a scale on it where you have to calibrate it. I really don't recommend those. This is really nice to have a, a, a number on here that I can really count on. And I've found these to be really accurate when I do test them with, the, with a gauge. I'll set this, I have this set at 250 degrees currently. That's a good temperature to work from. Understand that your fabric is going to shrink 10% by size. So there's a lot of shrinkage that's going to be involved in this. We start with 250. You're going to later go up to 300, then finally up to 350. During that final phase, you would get 10% uh, you of your shrinking. On something like a wing, that's real important. On something like a panel, you don't have to go to 350. As long as you get it flat and you get your wrinkles out, you're good to go. Because this isn't like a wing where it's going to support any of the aerodynamics of the lift. It's simply bonding it to the surface. So 250, maybe 275 is typically enough for this kind of step. So all I'm going to do here is I'm just going to go ahead and just touch with my iron a few spots. And when you do that, you're going to find that every place you touch, 
you're going to get a spot that the that the glue is bedding through and you're going to see a darker spot and you're probably not going to be able to see it on this video it's not a close up enough view but all i've done is i've just gone ahead and adhered this onto the surface a little bit stronger so it's bonded on there nicely and i'm holding it by the fabric and it stays on there real nice once i know i've got that in place again with my iron just at 250 i'm going to go ahead and just lightly hit that entire edge and you can see i'm kind of working out Bound. I use the term outbound. You know, I'm just moving towards the outer edge of the of the fabric. And all I'm doing is using my heat and some pressure to bed that glue into the fabric. And I'm not worried too much about the surface on the top here. I just want to get it basically bedded down. 250 doesn't give me much shrinking, but it's a good temperature to really hold that down. You can see I'm going to go around a couple of times. You do the same thing if you were doing a door, if you were doing the side of a few slides that was covered in fabric. Either way, you're just working around the perimeter, just like you would on any fabric application. Okay, so I've got that done. And that's on there. It's on there nice and strong. You can see I'm just holding it by the fabric, and it's not coming off. Now I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to flip this over. Make sure your, your table is clean um, and there isn't anything that's going to get on your surface of your fabric. You could put a plastic sheet on here. But if you do a plastic sheet, make sure you don't have any glue because it'll stick to that plastic. So I'm gonna flip this over now and I'm gonna go ahead and I'm going to take my edges here and I'm going to bend these edges in and I'm gonna do corresponding sides, parallel sides first. And all I'm gonna do is again, just with my finger, I'm just gonna bed this in. You can see how nicely that's laying in there without any heat, just bedding into that glue very nicely. That looks pretty good. And then I'm going to go to the corresponding side here, the parallel side, I should say, and I'm going to lay that on down. And like I said before, this could be a pinked edge. This could be a, a edge like I cut, a little wrinkle there. I'll peel that off, get that out of there. That's better. That'll come out more with heat. Okay, so I've got the two parallel sides done. Now, the next step is going to be this side here. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to do an overlapping corner. You can go ahead and you can do this a couple of different ways. An overlapping corner is nice because what you wind up with is double fabric on the corner here. Now remember, whenever you're putting fabric on top of fabric, you have to put a drop of glue there. So what I would do in this case, since this fabric edge here is going to be bonded on top of this fabric, I need to have a little drop of glue there. That will take a few minutes to tack up. So what I'll do is I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna put a little bit on each of these corners. I'm gonna fold this one in first just so I can see approximately where that's gonna be. And then I'm just gonna put a small amount of glue. Don't get it too thick because it'll just take too long to cure up and you'll have to go do something else for a few minutes. So I'm gonna go ahead and all I'm doing is just coating that corner. Anytime you have fabric, overlapping fabric, you have to go ahead and put on the glue. It's a nice thing about our glue. It dries, it tacks up so quickly. Typically when you do one corner, work around something else, work another corner, you come back 10 minutes later when you're ready to hit that next side, it's gone ahead and tacked up. Okay, so I've got that glue on there. I'll move my glue out of the way. And now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and I'm going to lay this down. And yes, I am putting this on top of wet glue and I would prefer it to tack up, but for what we're doing here, this is gonna work fine. You'll see how the heat will help to lock that in anyway. And all I'm doing is just getting this laid down. If you wanted to cut, on an angle in there and if you wanted to cut that corresponding piece underneath out so it wasn't so thick that's perfectly fine it's completely up to you this if it was a door would give me some thicker edges here and this edge will shrink down when we get heat on there later so i'm going to go ahead and lay this one down also and i'll come back and i'll do this side Now what I can do is I can go ahead and I can take the iron and I can take the iron in here and I can go ahead and I can heat this in 
and really lock that in just like I did on the top. And let me put this under here just to lift this up a little bit. So when I do this, if I do have glue here, wet glue, I can go ahead and hit it with the iron and that will help to stick that even though the glue is wet. You can see how that laid that corner down nicely. I prefer not to get glue on here, but if I do, I can just wipe it on my pants or I can wipe it on a, very quickly on a paper towel and that'll go ahead and that'll rub that off. So it's better to do that when it's set up, but if, you, if you're working quickly like I am, you can set that glue by putting the hot iron on it. So I'm gonna get that corner down. I'm gonna get this corner down. Those corners are set down pretty nicely. And then what I'm gonna do is just like I did on the top, I'm gonna go ahead and get these edges bonded in really well with the heat, get that heat, make sure I'm applying pressure and I'm, I'm applying enough heat. You should see the surface turn dark as the glue is bonding in. And you can see that a little bit. You might be able to see it on the video. It's just gonna get a little bit darker in here. If it doesn't, turn your iron up. I've got the iron set currently at 250. In this case, the wood on the side here is, is wicking off a lot of heat. So I'm gonna crank this up to about 275, just to bed that in a little better. And it takes a couple of minutes for the iron to come up to that temperature, but it doesn't take really that much time. So I can just continue working. A little more pressure on here. Not worrying about the edge itself. I'll come back and get that momentarily, which will take care of any wrinkles or any spots that are sticking above the surface. Okay, I've got that pretty well down. I don't see any bubbles. I don't see any wrinkles. It's nice and flat. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to come over here to my edges and I would just take my iron and I would just go ahead and roll these edges just to get any of the little bubbles that are left in here. Make sure this is adhered nicely to the edge of my plywood. So go ahead and I'm going to work those out. And remember we talked about the 10% shrinkage. When I drew my line for this lip, I actually had that fabric about an eighth of an inch longer than necessary, knowing that it would shrink back and tie that nicely inside that corner just to give it that nice finished look. It's not critical, obviously, but I like the nice crisp look of having the fabric come to a nice terminating point inside there. So again, I'm just gonna come over here and I'm gonna get these edges. Switch hands here. I'm going to go ahead and work this corner down. And on these corners, just apply heat and just kind of roll that corner in, just like I'm doing here. You can see the process. I'm just rolling the iron. And I, you've got to give the iron time to actually activate, to heat up the glue and actually shrink the fabric. What a lot of people do, they make mistakes, is they think if they go over fast like this, it's somehow gonna work. You've gotta give that fabric time to actually shrink and move. It's not gonna be instantaneous at this temperature we're working with. If you've got areas that don't seem to be laying down real well, turn up your iron. You can turn it up to 275 like I've done. You can turn it up to 300 if you need to to get that glue to bed on down through the fabric nicely. I'm getting pretty close on this first application of heat. Something I wanna show you that I like to do is take the panel and have it hanging over the edge of a table like this. That way I can get in here really nice and easily and I can really roll that iron around. And I actually turn the iron up. I'm currently at about 300 degrees. What I'm really trying to do is get this edge nice and sharp along the side here. And the corners came out real nice and sharp. I can go ahead, I can flip this over. I'm not ironing the middle yet. I'm just applying heat just on that glue joint where I put the glue initially. All I'm doing is getting those corners nice and crisp and getting those shrunk against the plywood. And it's coming out really nice. I don't have any wrinkles. I'm real pleased with the way the corners came out. 
So once I get this on here, and you will see a, some shrinking on the surface, but that's really not what we're intending to do. When we actually shrink the surface, I'll set the camera a little bit closer so you can see how that's going to work. So all I'm doing is I'm just, again, using that temperature really to bond that in. And you can really see nicely how we've got a color change there. Should be able to see that a little bit. And we've got the color change right here where the heat has gone ahead and heated that glue and it's, it's worked its way through the surface of the fabric. So I'm pretty happy with that. I don't have any bubbles in my edges. I'm just checking those over one more time before I put on the next application of glue. And from that point, we'll have to do, let it set a little bit before we can do our shrinking. But we're getting very close to being done with this particular panel. So I've got all my edges done. I like the way they look. I don't have any bubbles. So what I'm gonna do next, put my iron aside, and I'm gonna come back to my glue, and all I'm gonna do, I'm not gonna do anything on the surface yet, because I need to shrink this. What I'm gonna do though, is I wanna lock this fabric in to my first layer of glue. I wanna lock that in really good, so that when I shrink this, I don't accidentally pull this off in an area that maybe I didn't heat bond very well. So I'm gonna take my glue and make sure I've got a clean paper towel for this. And I'm gonna go ahead and just on this inside lip, all I'm gonna do is with full strength glue is I'm gonna go ahead and just work my glue through. And you're gonna definitely see a color change as this works its way through the fabric down to that bed layer of glue that you already put on there. Now this is gonna be seen, this will be painted, this will be covered with Ecofill and so forth. So you do not want to leave a, a real rough edge with a lot of extra eco bond on here. So what I'd like to do is get that worked in. You'll see how it saturates through the fabric very nicely. Does a really nice job getting through there. If your glue is a little bit thick, it's been, you've been working it during the day, you can thin this down up to 10% for this process. And I'm just going to take a paper towel here. And I, all I'm doing is just very, light, very lightly wiping off excess so that I don't have a rough surface that will be seen through the Ecofill, which I'll be putting on later. It's so gonna do that on all four edges. And before we shrink the other side, and this would be true on a wood panel or on a steel frame, an open frame like a um, elevator or a horizontal stabilizer. I want this to dry really well before I go ahead and shrink the other side. So I'm going to let this set. This would be a good point to go eat lunch or to take some other break or often I like to end at this point and come back the next day to do my covering. This will probably take about 20 minutes, maybe a half hour. Once this is good and dried, then I can come back here and I can do the final shrinking on this side and then we can go ahead and bond this to the surface of the plywood and be done, have this ready to dry prior to application of Ecofill. So we'll let this sit for about a half hour and we'll come back and we'll put the, the we'll do the shrinking on the surface and bond it with our glue. Okay, we've given the panel a good amount of time, about, uh, gave it about an hour to dry. And what we've got now is the glue here is very nicely dry. There's no transfer, it's lightly sticky. So at this point, we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna shrink the panel. Now, when we shrink this, we're gonna be shrinking from the middle and we're gonna kind of work out in a star pattern so we're not shrinking in one, any one spot. You've gotta give the fabric time to actually shrink. Some people will go over it way too fast and they don't understand why the wrinkles don't come out. Just go over it slowly and work the wrinkles out. I'm gonna reset the camera so we've got a close up on this so you can get a better look at exactly what we're doing with the shrinking. You can see in this closer view of the panel, we've got a lot of wrinkles on here. That's normal. Um, it's loose. We don't have, we're not holding, we don't have it bonded on here. We don't have it shrunk. We're gonna go ahead and do the shrinking now. And I've got the iron set at about 250 degrees. And we'll go ahead and we'll start at the middle. We'll just kind of work around slowly, giving the fabric time to actually shrink when we go through the process. So I'm gonna start right here in the middle. And just hold my iron on there and just move it around, slowly allowing it to shrink. 
And I do this at 250 degrees. I don't need to go higher yet. If I need to go higher to work some of the wrinkles out, I will. But initially, all I'm trying to do is smooth out the fabric and get it to lay flat on this surface. Now, this panel is very flat. Sometimes you'll have a panel that's a little bit concave or convex. If it does dish down a little bit, you don't want to shrink it too much because it'll lift up above those low spots and it'll be harder to bond later. So I'm just lightly moving this around right now at 250, just working out some of my initial wrinkles. And you can see they're still visible on there. That's perfectly normal. I will be turning this up probably to about 275 since I did have some pretty severe wrinkles in here to start with. Okay, got initial shrink done. You can see there's still a few spots where the wrinkles are showing on here. The wood will wick out some of the heat of the iron. Uh, the iron currently is reading 222 degrees, so it has dropped 30 degrees just from the wicking. So you can see I've got some out of there, but I'm going to have to turn this iron up a fair amount to get enough heat. So I'm going to crank this up. Since it's wicking off so much heat, I'm going to turn it up to about 300 degrees. Now you can start to see those wrinkles are very nicely disappearing. I don't think I'm going to have to go past this temperature. And as I said, I set the iron at about 300. And with the heat that was wicking off of it, it's currently at about 250 degrees, actual surface temperature. And you can see, looks like we just about got all the wrinkles off of there. I like to do the same temperature a couple of times just to make sure I really get it nice and smooth. I'm also checking my edges. I've got kind of a sharp edge here little bit of a bubble so again I'll just hit that edge with my iron and lay that on down we're checking all of our edges that's much better to make sure these are all nice and smooth if I have a wrinkle that's really causing me some grief something that's just too high I can turn my iron up and I do have a spot there that I don't like it's a little bit more of a bump. I missed that when I first laid down my fabric. So what I actually did now is I've turned my iron up to 200, 340 degrees. So I'm going to check any other edges. Got a little bit of a sharp edge here also. Can't really see it. But there's a little bit of a sharp edge here. So I'm just going to hit it with my iron and just lay that sharp edge down a little bit. That's gone now. This would be done on any frame, whether it's a metal frame or in this case a wood frame all we're doing is we're just using our heat to make sure that we've got everything down the way we want it i've got another little spot here a little bubble in this corner and i want to get out Check that out and this this wrinkle here that I was a little concerned about, my iron is at 315 now, and I will just work that out a little bit. I'm going to work on the outside of that wrinkle to kind of shrink the fabric to pull that wrinkle down. And it looks like it's just about out. A little bit of pressure, a little more heat. And that wrinkle is completely gone. So while I have this temperature up, I'll just hit this edge here a little bit more. And you can really see how that color changes where the glue is hit with that high temperature. It really beds into that surface. So we're really locking that in along the edges. And I'm going to turn my iron down. I don't need it quite that hot for the middle of the shrink turn it back down to 300 and i don't really have to wait that long for the temperature to come down it's going to wick that heat out pretty quick 
one of the tricks that I'll do if I want to wick heat out of my iron right away is I'll just go ahead and I'll put it on another surface while the temperature is dropping down and I'll let that material, in this case, this piece of wood, pull my temperature down. It'll pull it down fairly quickly. And I've got it down a little bit more where I want it. There's going to be one more final shrink here in the middle just to make sure the entire panel is shrunk. One of the reasons I would not want to go to 350, if this were a fairly light wood frame, and sometimes that may be the case, if it's very, very light, applying 350 heat could possibly warp it. I added quite a bit of bracing on the back of this, so I wasn't at all concerned about that. Of course, on my doors, I didn't have any concern about any kind of warpage either. I think that is going to be sufficient. You should be able to see pretty clearly that there's no wrinkles left in there. It's nice and smooth and there's no bubbles. At this point, we're ready to go ahead and bond the glue to the surface of the plywood. Okay, we're going to go ahead and bond the fabric to the surface of the plywood. We've got all our shrinking done. Everything is on there. There's no bubbles. I brought out one of our little gummy racers. If you've got any areas that you did get globs of glue on or something that looks like it's heavier than you like, you can simply take one of the glue erasers and you can rub that area and that'll take it off. Don't worry if you see a little green because we're gonna be sealing that anyway and we're gonna be gluing that to the surface. So I know this is all set, it's all nice and, and tight. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna apply the glue and bond this on here. This is going to adhere that fabric to the plywood so there won't be any issues with it lifting up or any bubbles. Since it's nice and warm today, it's about 85 degrees in here. It's a warm day. I've taken and I've thinned out my glue just a little bit. Uh, I don't have a lot of glue in here because I don't need a lot. So I added just a few drops. Like I said, you can, you can, you can uh, put about 10% water in here to thin this out. So what I'm going to do now is make sure I have a clean paper towel because I am going to want to wipe this out. I can turn off my iron and I can move this out of the way so I don't get tangled up in that. And I'm going to start from the middle of my panel, and I'm going to kind of work outbound. And I don't want to do an area more than about six inches square at any given time, because in this heat, the glue will start to gum up fairly quickly. And since this is going to be a finish area, this is going to be just like when you put on finishing tapes, just like when you put on an inspection ring, you need to do the, the, the wipe so you don't have excess. You're just working it into the surface. And it's going to bond down right easily into that that fabric and bond it to the, the panel. So let's go ahead and do that. So we'll just take the glue and from the middle here, and I'm using the bristles of the brush to work that in, and you'll be able to see a color change very quickly as it starts to penetrate the fabric and bond to the plywood underneath. If we had applied glue to the fabric, or excuse me, to the plywood before shrinking, we wouldn't have been able to pull this tight. That's why we do not add the glue for bonding until now. Now, just this small section that I've done, you can start to see how well that penetrates. It penetrates very, very nicely through the fabric onto the plywood. So we're going to go ahead and do that for the whole surface. And you notice how I brush it in. Just do a small section at a time, working that into the fabric. Take my clean paper towel and wipe. If you do too many wipes, it's going to start to glob up very quickly. So give yourself about three quick wipes. You see I applied a little bit more pressure there, so I got a little bit more bonding there, which is more what I'd like to see. I'll come back over on this side. It's a little thick there. I'll move up here a little bit. I'm watching my surface so I can see that it's penetrating well through the fabric. A cleaner spot on my paper towel. Let's 
see how nice that's penetrating through there. Just can knock any of the excess on there. Already was starting to gum because I was brushing a little bit more than I needed to. Okay, now I'm going to come this way. All the way out to my edges. I'm doing this on all the fabric that's white. All of it that has no glue on it. Penetrating this down into the surface. If you let it set a second, if it's cooler, that'd be fine because it would penetrate the fabric well. But at this temperature, this is going to start to tack up very quickly. It's pretty warm in here. But I'm not at all worried. This is bonding very nicely. I can observe that very clearly. Almost too many wipes there. If you wind up with any bubbles because you've got a concave area, an area dishes in a little bit, that's where you come back later with your heat after this is dried with about 240 degrees and help to set that down there. I'm gonna pause for a minute and get some more paper towels and some more glue. Okay, we got some more glue here and more paper towels. You're gonna use a lot of these paper towels, so get a big box or get a case. Pour a little bit more glue in here. I won't have to thin this out with water since this is fresh. Put that aside. I'll come back up here. And I'll do this in two applications here. I can see that this is definitely a little bit thinner since it's fresh from the bottle and hasn't been sitting out at all. It's really penetrating through the fabric well. Fresh paper towel. Obviously, if you're doing a big door, the amount of space you do in each little application is just dependent on how comfortable you are with the wiping, what your temperature is, if it's way too hot or way too cool. Uh, both of those are gonna be factors that's gonna uh, adjust how well the, the wiping goes and how quick you have to get this off before it starts to tack up. Same application process as if you're doing, like I said, an inspection ring or taping over a rib or taping a trailing edge of a control surface. Same process. You always wipe when you have a final coat of glue, when it's a full strength glue like this. And looking at that, I might hit that middle area just a little bit more. A couple spots on there a little bit light. See if this will penetrate through, but I'm not unhappy with that. Just wanna see if I can get that a little bit more consistent. Yeah, it's penetrating through there a little bit better. And that is good. I'm very happy with that. I've got the entire surface bonded. I've got the fabric bonded to the plywood very well. I can look at it from an angle like this and there are no bubbles. Even these areas that are lighter, lighter, it's not a bubble in any way. And what I would wanna do at this point is let this tack up completely, let it dry for a couple of hours, and then I would go ahead and put on uh, any tapes around the edges. If you're gonna do tapes, which is perfectly acceptable to do, what you simply do is you would do this just like you would do any tape application. Go ahead and cut your tapes. And then what I would do on this particular panel 
is I would use very, very little heat, about 230 degrees, and I would go ahead and I would put a fresh coat of glue inside here, and then I would use the iron to bed the, the finishing tape in here, and then I can go ahead and I can fold it over across the face. And then just then you're applying the finishing tapes just like you would on any panel. And once that's done, you're going to go ahead and, of course, you're going to put full strength glue and a wipe on top of the finishing tape. So if you want that pinked edge and the finished tape edge, that's perfectly fine. If you want to leave it a plain edge like this, that's okay. The main reason for putting the pinked tape on here, finishing tape around here, is just to give some more strength around here, just a little bit more abrasion resistance by having two layers of fabric. That's about it. That's putting fabric on top of a plywood panel. You can see the only additional step really different from covering a control surface is you're putting that glue on the surface when you're done. Otherwise, you're putting your glue around the perimeter, just like we do on a control surface. You're putting your fabric down. You're doing your initial bonding of the fabric to the edges. You're, sh you're sealing, the, you're, you're re-gluing, you're applying glue to lock that in. You're letting it sit. You're shrinking. And then from there, we apply the glue. From this point, uh, you're done. Now you're at the point where you're going to go ahead and apply EcoFill, just like you would on any fabric panel. That's it for applying fabric to wood. I hope that answers a lot of your questions. If not, give us a call and we can walk you through it. Thanks.